Welcome dear audience students and scholars here I am Dr. Amjad Ali in this video we will learn about real wage rigidity and structural unemployment. Dear scholar wage rigidity is one of the main cause of unemployment, the failure of wages to adjust to a level at which labor supply equals labor demand and equilibrium model of labor market. The real wage adjust to equilibrate labor supply and um, and labor demand yet wages are not always flexible sometimes real wage is uh, stuck above market uh, clearing level let's see a graphical presentation how real wage rigidity works for employment and unemployment of the economy real wage rigidity leads to a, a, a job rationing we have the uh, labor supply uh, labor on x axis and we have uh, for wages real wage on x uh, y axis and we have a fixed supply of labor and we have the demand for the labor and we know that uh, intersection of demand and supply will decide the wages of the labor uh, and uh, at this point that amount of uh, workers is willing to work but we know that wages are reached at a higher point so oh, wages are decided at this point so at this point of wages uh, firm will hire that amount of labor so that part of labor will remain unemployed so we know that that amount of labor is willing to work and that amount of labor will be higher so difference between these two will be amount of unemployment so this figure shows that uh, why wage rigidity leads to unemployment when the real wage uh, is above the level that equilibrates supply and demand the quantity of labor uh, supplied exceed the quantity demanded for must in some way uh, rationalize the scarce job among workers real wage rigidity reduces the rate of job finding and raises the level of unemployment in the economy structural unemployment while talking about the structural unemployment the unemployment resulting from wage rigidity and uh, job rationing uh, is sometimes called structural unemployment. Workers are unemployed not because they are actively searching for the jobs that best suit uh, their individual skills uh, but because there is a fundamental mismatch between the number of, of people who want to work and the number of jobs that are available. At uh, the going wage, uh, the quantity of labor supplied exceeds the quantity of labor demanded. So many workers are simply waiting for jobs to open up. So to understand wage rigidity, the structural unemployment, we must examine why uh, a labor market does not clear when real wage exceeds the equilibrium equilibrium level and the supply of worker exceeds the demand we might expect firms to lower the wages uh, they pay structural unemployment raises uh, because firms fail to reduce uh, wages despite an excess supply of labor okay here we have uh, the causes of wage rigidity there are three main causes of wage rigidity uh, the first one is minimum wage laws second one is the monopoly power of uh, unions and the third one is efficiency wages so let's discuss about uh, uh, the detail of minimum wage law the government causes uh, wage rigidity when it prevents wage from falling to equilibrium levels uh, minimum wage laws set a legal minimum on the wages that firms pay their implies since the passage of the Fair uh, Law Standard Act of 1938. The U.S. federal government has enforced a minimum wage uh, that has usually been between 30 and 50 percent of the average wage in manufacturing for most workers than uh, 
uh, this minimum wage is not binding because they earn well uh, above the minimum wage. Yet for some workers, especially the unskilled and inexperienced, the minimum wage raises uh, their wage above the equilibrium level and therefore reduces the quantity of their labor that firm demand. Economists believe that minimum wage uh, has its great uh, greatest impact on uh, teenage unemployment, the equilibrium uh, wages of uh, teenagers uh, tend to be low for two reasons. Uh, first, because teenagers are among the uh, least skilled and least experienced uh, uh, members of the labor force, they tend to have low marginal productivity. Uh, so second teenagers often take some of their compensation in the form of on job training rather than uh, direct payments. So classical example for this the internship program uh, provide training and offer some wages to the uh, teenagers for both reason the wage at which uh, uh, the supply of teenage workers equal the demand is low well, the minimum wage is therefore more often binding for the teenagers than for the others in the labor force many economists have studied the impact of uh, uh, minimum wage on the teenage uh, employment these researchers compare the variation in the minimum wage uh, over time with the variation in the number of teenagers with the jobs these studies uh, find that a uh, 10% increase in the minimum wage reduces employment by 1 to 3% uh, of the teenagers. Okay, while talking about the minimum wage law, uh, the minimum wage is a persistent source of political debate. Uh, advocates of a uh, higher minimum wage view it as a means of raising the income of working. Uh, poor uh, certainly the minimum wage provide only a merger standard of living in the United States two adults working full-time uh, at a minimum wage job would uh, just exceed the official poverty level uh, for a family for uh, of a four members although minimum wage advocates often admit that the policy causes unemployment for some workers they argue that this cost is uh, worth bearing to raise others out of poverty okay opponents of uh, a higher minimum uh, wage claim uh, it is not the best way to help the working uh, poor they contend uh, not only that the increased labor costs would raise unemployment but also that the minimum wage is poorly targeted targeted. Uh, many minimum wage earners are teenagers from uh, middle class homes working for uh, discretionary spending money rather than head of uh, household uh, working to support their family. Many economists and policy makers believe that uh, tax credits are a better way to increase the incomes of the working poor the earned uh, income tax credit is an amount that poor working families are allowed to subtract from the taxes they owe, owe for a family with uh, a very low income the credit exceeds these taxes and the family receives a payment from the government unlike uh, the government minimum uh, the minimum wage uh, the earned uh, uh, income tax credit does not raise labor costs to firms and therefore does not reduce the quantity of labor that firm demanded. Uh, it has a disadvantage, however, uh, of reducing the government tax revenue in the long run. Unions and uh, collective bargaining, a second cause of uh, 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 of wage rigidity, is the monopoly part of. Uh, uh, of the labor unions uh, let's see a graphical presentation here not the graphical let's see a schedule schedule here uh, so see here uh, in the united states only 18 percent uh, uh, of the workers have their wages set through the collective bargaining in the uh, but in most european countries uh, unions play a 
a much uh, larger role in deciding the uh, level of wages so here we see that in finland and austria uh, 98 per 95 and 98% respectively wages are decided by the collective bargaining the wage uh, the wages of unionized uh, workers are determined not only uh, not by the equilibrium of supply and demand but to, by bargaining between the union leaders and the firm management uh, often the final agreement raises the wages above the equilibrium level and allows the firm to decide how many workers to employ the result is a reduction in the number of workers hired a low rate of job finding and an increase in structural unemployment so by talking about the unions and collective bargaining unions can also influence the wage uh, paid uh, by the firm whose workforce are not unionized because the threat of unionization can keep wages above the equilibrium level most firms dislike unions uh, unions not only raise wages but also increase the bargaining power of labor on many other issues such as hours of employment and working condition uh, firm may uh, choose to pay its workers high wages uh, to keep them happy and discourages uh, them from forming a union the unemployment uh, caused by unions uh, and by the threat of unionization is an instance of conflict between different groups of workers insider and outsider uh, those workers already employed by a firm the insider typically try to keep their uh, wages uh, high the unemployed the outsider bear part of the cost of high wages because at a lower wages a wage they might be hired so these two groups uh, inevitably be uh, have a conflicting interest the effect of uh, any bargaining process on wage and employment depends crucially on the relative influence of each group the conflict between insider and outsider is resolved different in different countries and in some countries such as united states wage bargaining takes place uh, at uh, the level of firms are planned uh, in other countries uh, such as sweden wage bargaining takes place at national level uh, with the government often playing uh, a key role despite a high unionization uh, unionization labor force sweden has Uh, not experience extraordinary uh, high un- unemployment throughout uh, its history one possible explanation is that uh, centralization of wage bargaining and the role of government in the bargaining process gave more influence uh, to the outsider which keeps wage closer uh, to the minimum level efficiency wages efficiency wages uh, theory is proposed a third cause of wage rigidity in addition to minimum wage laws and unionization these theories hold that high wage make workers more productive and the influence of wages uh, on worker efficiency may explain the failure of firm to cut uh, wages despite an excess supply of of labor even though a uh, a wage reduction uh, would lower a firm's wage bill it would also oh, if these theories are correct lower workers productivity and the firm profit economists have proposed various theories to explain uh, how wages affect worker productivity first theory one efficiency wage theory which is applied mostly uh, poorer Uh, cu- countries hold that wages influence the nutrition uh, better paid workers can afford a more nutrition uh, nutritious diet and healthier workers are more productive a firm may decide to pay a wage above the equilibrium level to maintain a healthy a workforce Obviously this consideration is not important for employers in a wealthier country because uh, equilibrium wage is well above the level necessary to maintain good health 
the second efficiency theory uh, which is more relevant for the developed country hold that high wages reduce uh, labor turnover okay workers uh, could job uh, jobs for many reason to accept better position uh, at other firms to change careers or to move uh, to other parts of the country uh, the more a firm pays its worker, the greater uh, is their incentive to stay with the firm. Uh, by paying a high wage, a firm reduces the frequency at which its worker quit, thereby uh, decreasing the time and money spent uh, hiring and training new workers. The third efficiency theory uh, holds that uh, the average quality of a work uh, firm uh, workforce uh, depends on the wage it pays is implies. If a firm uh, reduces its wages, the best employees may take job elsewhere, uh, leaving the firm with uh, uh, inferior employees who have uh, fewer alternative opportunities. Uh, economists recognize this favorable uh, sorting and example of adverse selection uh, the tendency of people with more information by paying a wage above the equilibrium level the firm may reduce adverse selection uh, improve the average quality of its uh, workforce and thereby increase productivity and the fourth uh, uh, efficiency wage theory holds that a high wage improves workers' effort. This theory posits uh, that firm cannot perfectly monitor their employees' work effort uh, and that employees must themselves decide uh, how hard uh, to work. So workers uh, can choose to uh, work hard or they can choose to shrink uh, and risk getting caught uh, and fired. Uh, economists recognize this possibility as an example of moral hazard, the tendency of people to behave inappropriately uh, when their behavior is imperfectly monitored. So the firm can reduce the problem of moral hazards by paying a, a high wage. The higher uh, the wage, the greater the cost to the workers of getting fired by paying a higher wage of firm reduced, uh, induce uh, more of its implies not to shrink uh, and thus increase their productivity. Although these four efficiency uh, wage theories uh, uh, differs in detail, they share a common theme because a firm operates more efficiently uh, if it pays its workers a high wage, a firm may find it profitable uh, to keep wage above the level that uh, uh, balance supply and demand. The result of this higher than equilibrium wage is a uh, low rate of job finding and greater unemployment. So this is all about real wage digitity and structural unemployment. So see you with another video. Ciao.